Hello, friends. Josh here. This is part two of a conversation Mel and I were having with Lauren Lappin, who's a local business owner, award winner, lots of other crazy things you'll discover in this episode. She's got a lot on her plate and she seems to be kicking butt at all of it. I know part two's good because I've already edited that. So I personally think you're in for a treat today. If you want to give us a treat, you can buy us a coffee at punchingsideways.com. We had a donation coming through the week. Super appreciated for the person that did that. They'll be getting a full shout out in a future Punchy Sideways episode. And I won't keep you any longer now. This is Lauren Lappin. Let's do this thing. And I wouldn't have to spend my time teaching staff how to do that. Anyone could just pick up the manual and okay, know how so to do it. For everyone who's at home, how have you inspired the people who work with you and for you to actually read and embrace that? Because I think we've all worked places where they throw a manual at you on day one. And most of them aren't built on systems. They're more so built on just rules generally. Yeah. So how really do you get based, yeah, yeah, how do you get people to actually do it? Is it the fact that it takes stress out of their own job? Is that Yeah, like I'll I'll normally spend a few days like with someone new at the start, like when they first start with and you know, I'll go through a lot of processes with them, but if they ask me how to do something again after that, I'm like it's there in the manual. <laughs> and if you can't do it, you ask me questions, and that's the only way I've found that people learn. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's a pretty black and white manual. Like, it's not skipping over anything. Like, it's okay. very detailed. And yeah. I know we're getting super granular here, yeah. but <laughs> what, what was that, let's just say, that systems manual, what was it like when you first started doing it versus now? Has there been an evolution in how you approach creating those, or is it pretty standard? I used to hire for skill. Like I used to look at people's work histories and, you know, oh, can they use Photoshop? Can they use this? Can they use that? Have they used Microsoft Office? Have they ever used a booking system before? But I don't look at any of that now. I hire for like their personality. I personality test everyone. I look at how well they're going to work in with the rest of the team and myself. And I look at things like work ethic you know I like and people that just have a positive attitude because you can teach anyone a skill but you can't teach work ethic you can't teach loyalty that's just someone's put in someone's personality so and their that then their own personal values so yeah I hire on that now <laughs> that's a pretty Might big evolution yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, yeah. I like it. one thing that I have always noticed about you and which is probably leads into why you've gone down this route a little bit yourself is that you've always been big on investing in yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you just said with the coaching, like so early on, yep. you always seem to be doing stuff on the side that other people would might go, oh, what a waste of money. Why are you spending all your money on this? Yep. But obviously it's been such a important thing for you of learning and almost – do you think – Having a business coach also makes you a bit more accountable? Definitely. I know that uh, when I have my weekly Zoom with my business coach, the amount of work that I churn through the day before because I know I'm catching up with her and she's going to ask me um, is huge. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, I think I think it is um, a really get, great way, you know, to keep yourself accountable because you've got someone actually saying, okay, you know, well, what are your goals? What do you want to do? You know, et cetera, et cetera. And um, they help you stick to that because I think if you just set your own goals, sometimes it's easy to deviate from the plan and, you know, throw the towel in or, you know, for example, last year, how many people would have been like, oh, you know, it's just easier to just forget about 2020. I'll just do this next year or whatever. So, um, yeah, I think having a business coach is – a fantastic idea. I want to know, you went from City Walk, you're in your big space now, which took a while to find. I remember how long you were looking for the perfect space. Mm -hmm. And you're out in just off shoot from AMP Lane at the moment at the bottom of the car park. And what I want to know is how did someone then go from what 
that amazing space is to be traveling overseas winning awards. Can you actually paint a picture of the level that you've got to? Because you still sort of seem like just, oh, just make a bit of money doing <laughs> beauty. <laughs> would you Would you agree, Joe? Because yeah, yeah. there's a magnitude way above what she's talking right now. <laughs> I, I do occasionally enter in some business awards and things like that. Um, and early on in the day, I I um, also won some awards like for the lashes that I've done, you know, like lash competitions. So Individual awards. Yeah, yeah. So um, I did that in 2015, 2016. And then, yeah, 2018- no, 19, sorry. I'm losing track of the years here. 2019, um, the, there is a, there's a lash industry association that's based in Canada and they're kind of a worldwide association. They're probably the most well-known association and they're called NALA, which is an acronym for um, the National Association of Lash Artists. And yeah, they have awards every year, which is, that's probably the most prestigious within the lash industry. And yeah, I was nominated for Lash Studio of the Year in 2019. And yeah, I had to submit a heap of stuff for that nomination. And yeah, I was actually picked as a top five finalist. So I mean, unfortunately, I didn't win. I, I did go over to Canada um, for the gala and the awards. But just to be top five in the world, Lash Salon, you know, like it's, it's pretty awesome. Pretty in crazy. Albury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in Albury. So. <laughs> Which um, we'll, yeah. com- we'll come back to, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I actually got nominated again in 2020. So I got nominated for Lash Studio of the Year and I also got nominated, and I have no idea who nominated me, by the way. It's their, yeah, anonymous nominations. But yeah, last year I got nominated again for Lash Studio of the Year and I also got nominated in another category, Lash Artist Integrity Award. So that's kind of like um, a lash artist that's, you know, upholding the highest levels of you know, um, health and hygiene and also applying safe lengths and applying the lashes correctly not to damage their clients. Natural lashes. So, yeah, so I got nominated for both of those and, yeah, I did the whole submission thing again. I had to spend quite a few hours doing all that. And, yeah, I actually made it in again twice for both categories, so top five in the world, top five last year, top five lash – artists with integrity <laughs> in the world. Unfortunately, the Nala Gala was cancelled in 2020 because of COVID. I think they will be holding it in 2021 in May. I I am not holding out much hope <laughs> being able to go, but um, yeah, it'll all be, you know, streamed on YouTube and everything like that. And yeah, just waiting to see now. Um, so that's three years in a row. And well, two years two, in a row for two categories. Two, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, top, that's awesome, top five in the world. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. So you talked about lash integrity and I just would like you to just, whether you can just explain to someone that maybe like Josh who has no idea about None the whatsoever. industry or lashes, just a brief sort of, overview of what can go wrong and what can go right with application of lashes. So for all those people playing at home, we apply one single lash to one of your natural lashes. So we use tweezers in both hands and we use one set of tweezers in our left hand to isolate the natural lash. So we kind of dig in and push them apart, separate them, and and then we use our other tweezers to pick up an extension, dip it in the glue, and apply it. So there's a lot of things that go into it, which I'm not going to bore everyone <laughs> with, but the things, the main things that can go wrong, which, you know, there's been such an evolution in the last few years, like most people now are doing the right thing, which is really great. And I mean, I still see it from time to time now, 
some people don't isolate the lashes. So they just come and plonk a heap of lashes on and they all end up stuck together. Wonderful. So <laughs> what what actually happens then is when the natural lashes start to grow, because all those extensions are stuck together with chunks of glue, they become very, very uncomfortable. And what happens is they start to grow out and twist and turn in odd directions and they're very, very painful and they end up snapping the natural lashes off or pulling them out by the root. So, (laughs) yeah, if you're having repeated applications of lashes like that, you will end up with permanent natural lash damage. So gaps in the lash line and things like Mm -hmm. that. And your natural, you won't have a base there to apply safe extensions to in the future. Josh is just there with his eyes just going, whoa. This is a, <laughs> yeah. There's much more to it, I think. There yeah. is more. Well, there's obviously an artistry to it. because I No, but that's what I mean. There's much more to it, the actual of doing it right. Yeah. An application. Yeah. Than you've, what, got to, you've got to choose, your, you know, you've got to choose the right adhesive. You've, you've got to have the conditions in your salon right. So the humidity and the temperature has to be stable. Um, you need to apply eye patches to the lower eyelid to protect the bottom lashes so you don't stick people's eyes together. (laughs) You need to apply the lashes no more than half a millimetre from the skin of the um, eyelid. Um, Any closer can cause irritation. Um, Any further out, they can droop and twist and snap prematurely. Yeah, so that's just the tip of the iceberg, really. (laughs) I, but yeah, like I don't, I don't want to bore people with too so, many technical things. <laughs> to follow on from that, obviously, for your business in 2020, part of the integrity award, I would assume, would have been there was a pretty big iceberg that came to the surface with COVID. Yes, was that rolled up into how like that same just just to use the award as a mm-hmm. well, the nomination as a focal point? Was mm-hmm. that was that rolled into how did your particular sell on handle? No, because these were all done before COVID hit. Right. So yeah, I had to have my submission in I think January or February twenty twenty. So 2020. Um, okay. yeah. So that was yeah, and because the they didn't run the awards last year, all the winners will be announced in twenty twenty one. So Right. Yeah. So can we just talk about We can though, no, that's like, a good topic. Yeah, yeah, so I would obviously there was a certain amount of regulation that every business had to adhere to, mm-hmm. but how did you find it and what were you guys doing? And We were doing everything right to start with. I actually can't believe that we were shut down. I can understand why we were shut down. I'm not saying, you know, that we shouldn't have been or anything like that, but I've always worn a face mask. <laughs> Most of our stuff is single use. Everything's cleaned, everything's sanitised, disinfected between clients. So really there's a very, very low chance of anything happening in the salon. Um, Yeah, so in that way we're very safe. And when when we reopened it was very, very easy to get back into business as usual. And sorry, my my question might have been insensitive there because I didn't remember that business like yours would have to have closed. Yeah. So sorry about that to start no, with. No, that's okay. What do you as a business own? Obviously the world is throwing something at you that you just can't plan for, but yes. what was that like as a business owner with employees and the, the uncertainty? It was pretty horrible to start with. Um, we were closed down late March when the announcement came that beauty had to shut down Australia-wide. And... It was, it was very um, scary because we didn't know how long that was going to be for. You know, there was no sort of end date or anything like that. And, you know, I did, I've got, em- I had employees, I've got employees and we were shut down before the announcement of JobKeeper. So I actually said to the girls, look, I am happy to pay you all your holiday pay and all your sick pay. I've got it all in the bank. You know, we can we can pay that however you like. Um, if you want to do half pay, you know, like, you know, pay out for 20 hours equivalent per week just to make it last longer so you've got a bit of money to get by. Um, you know, and I was happy to do that. I was happy to pay them out all their sick pay. Um, you know, it's not my money, it's theirs. I save it every week. You know, that's what it's there for. So I was happy to do that. So that's what we had decided on going forward because I only had one 
casual staff member at the time. The rest of my team were permanent full-time or permanent part-time. So we had decided on doing that, and I think about a week or a week and a half after we were closed, um, the JobKeeper scheme was announced. So that, I mean, that was just fantastic. They didn't have to use all their leave. So, you know, they've still got that. And, yeah, I was able to pay them the JobKeeper, which, I mean, initially for a lot of businesses was very difficult because you had to pay the first month up front. Like it was, it was paid back in arrears. It was a reimbursement. It was paid back in arrears. (laughs) So I think my, I had to pay in the first month, I think it was like $17,500 in in wages before they were reimbursed back to me. And I am lucky. I'm I'm lucky, but I... I'm not lucky at the same time because I've always saved money. I've always saved all the leave. I've always saved all the super. So it's sitting there in account when I have to pay it. It's, you know, I don't want any surprises or anything like that. So um, I had all that money and I know a lot of business owners that didn't have it and they couldn't get the job keeper because they couldn't afford to pay that first month out. They had nothing and I like I know bus- other businesses in this local area, and I know beauty businesses in Austra- like Australia wide that couldn't pay their staff, and they had to send them all to Centrelink to get Job Seeker. There you go, it's business savvy. Now, you don't know where I'm going with this, Josh, so I'm just going to do it. If you like us, like I like us, get onto punchingsideways.com, give us a bit of a likesy, have a bit of an exploration around, and maybe buy us a coffee. She talked about the sciencey sort of stuff of the humidity has to be right, the glue has to be right, and all this other stuff. So you just went, hey, I can't find something that is adequate to my needs. I'm just going to start a whole business, another business called Runway Lash Co., which is going to supply everyone else within <laughs> Australia with the perfect product. Yeah, I kind of forgot about that too. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> That was where I was going and you went off it. So, yeah. yeah. So you've got a whole other business where now you've – because I remember initially too when you just was like, oh, you know, I've got these lashes and these tweezers I keep. And she – so the tweezers she's talking about individually separating, I remember to start with when she was finding stockists and everything like that, that every set that would turn up, Lauren would test herself to make sure – that they were good enough to send out. Yeah, yeah. So tweezers are really hard. They're all made in Pakistan. <laughs> and that's where all the surgical implements and hairdressers, scissors and all the metal things come from, Pakistan, for anyone that doesn't know. Well, I didn't um, know that, so yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So I think the Japanese do some high-quality stainless steel stuff, but most stuff comes from like dental implements as well, things like that. They all come from Pakistan. But anyway, so yeah, I, I have to test all these tweezers by hand um, and I don't I don't sell anything that I wouldn't use in my own salon. So yeah. So what made you decide just, I'm just going to start another business on top of this business, was it lack of consistency in the product that you were receiving? Yeah, yeah. Um, Stock issues, you know, when I, because I have a big salon, we go through a lot of product and, you know, and I used to order quite regularly and it was very difficult when the um, stockers would be out of stock of something that you needed. So you had to shop around and try and find another one that had what you needed. And with lashes, I like to stick to the same brand because there's consistency in the curl and the length and the texture and all of that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, when you start adding different brands into the mix, the, end the product can is- end up not looking great. Like, But anyway, yeah, so I just – and I was using massive amounts of – we are going through massive amounts of product and I just – I mentioned earlier that I did work in IT. I worked for a um, – a wholesaler of Apple computer accessories and, yeah, he actually started his own brand of things and um, he, he started importing, you know, from China and things like that and branding things as his own. So I kind of knew how to do it. <laughs> so Well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so I, um, yeah, just decided to start my own brand and, you know, I tested a heap of products probably two years before I actually put my name to them um, and I still do that. 
it's funny, I got asked the other day by another lash artist if I had a product development team and I'm like, yeah, it's my own girls in my own salon, me and my own girls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so yeah, I have Runway Lash Co, which is an online business. We supply lash artists Australia wide. I was about to delve into the worldwide market early last year, but then COVID hit and all of the planes that were shipping everything had stopped flying because they use like Australia Post and um, yeah. a few other shipping companies. They use commercial, you know, passenger planes to ship their a, a lot em- of stuff. empty cargo space. And, yeah, and they, yeah. they they weren't flying, so stuff was sitting at the airport for months. So I'm like, yep, I'm not delving into this right now. I'm just <laughs> going to stick with Australia. <laughs> so yeah. So that's a whole other platform that, it is. that she's developed. And I know because I've seen it, the packaging is is beautiful, but every parcel that is sent out is also very, it seems very individualised. Um, it's all wrapped in beautiful, like, do you want to talk, talk talk us through, like, the level of detail that you go through <laughs> Because it's not just turning yeah. up in a post pack. Yeah. I, so she creates more. This is where I can relate. Someone that creates more work for herself. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Because she wants things done right. So I, if you receive a package, what yeah. what happens? So, yeah, I had my own postage boxes made, like all branded, and they are quite nice. They're pale pink with gold foil lettering and everything. They're quite pretty. I just, yeah, before I had my own wholesale company, I, you know, I'd, I'd get these parcels rocking up to the salon and they just look crap. Like it's just, I'm <laughs> like, I'm just spending a lot of money here and they're just packed really badly and they just look terrible. And I don't, nothing about this experience is making me feel happy. Mm-hmm. And I kind of, you know, how people say when they online shop and they receive their packages that they're, oh, I've got presents coming, <laughs> presents to myself. And I was like, yeah, it, I want it to feel like you're opening a present. So yeah, I designed these boxes and, you know, like tissue paper and gold foil stickers and everything. And everything's like wrapped up really pretty. And it's like you're getting a gift in the mail. And I put chocolates in the orders as well. Yeah. So you get to have a chockey when you open up. So your, you yeah. do that or someone who works for you does that? Um, yeah, I've had other people doing it for me. But on the days that I'm working from home, I'll just like the days that I'm not working in my salon, I'll usually pack orders. But yeah, I've, I've had, I have employed various people to do it. And my receptionist from my salon, he, he sometimes goes and does that. Um, for me, if I'm away or I'm at the salon with clients, he'll go and pack all the orders. But yeah, nice. It's almost a, it's a, a day turnaround, isn't it? Before you like, if you order before two, yes, it's sent. Yeah. So I that's another thing that really annoyed me. Um, you know, I'd place an order, and you know, it wouldn't even be packed and shipped for a few days. Okay. You know, you'd get a shipping notification a few days later, and I'm thinking, no, we, you know, if you need stock, you need stock, you need it straight away. So, so you're, this is B to B. Yeah. Yeah, and they're still taking two days. Oh, well, that's more. Not, that's yeah. yeah, that's horrible. More, yeah. <laughs> and you'd just be like, um, sending an email to a supplier, going, you know, that three hundred dollar LED lamp that I ordered because you know one of my team broke one, and I really need a new one because we can't see what we're doing. <laughs> you know, is that shipped? Like. Oh, yeah, we're shipping it today. So I, yeah, on my website, I have a, a cutoff. If you if you order by 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'll ship it the same day. Usually I will ship all the orders that come in every day, though, like just because I, I know what it's like as a business owner to need stuff quickly. <laughs> Basically, you get annoyed by things and then you just create something to fix the problem and then also pass on that generosity. Basically. Knowing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah which, is, which is good. But that's what business is. Yeah. You're fixing a problem. You are fixing a problem that someone's having. That That is the basis of business. This episode was edited by Dead Set Podcasting. If you want your podcast to sound this good, check out deadsetpodcasting.com forward slash services. Get the sound you're chasing. That's excellent. So you've got the local salon. Yes. 
and you've got a, a business that exists on the internet and you're winning international awards, so you're covering all the bases, mm-hmm. local, national and international. Have you ever found, and this is something we always get to with people and we normally finish up with, mm-hmm. have you ever found the fact that you live in Albury, Wodonga to be a negative for you or a hindrance or in any way limiting your growth or potential? No, I I don't. It's never been an issue for me. It hasn't stopped me or prevented me from doing anything. You know, we have an airport here. I can I can go anywhere I want, basically, if I need to, you know, for training, conferences, awards. And a lot of stuff can be done online now. And I, I honestly don't think it's been a hindrance at all. I think for myself, sometimes I like I feel like I might have a limiting belief in myself that I I'm I'm kind of delving into a bit of business coaching now as well. So as in so, your coaching people, just yes, so it's clear. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I remember when I was doing my website, um, I was working with a copywriter and she, you know, had written what I'd done and where I'd come from and everything. And I kind of said, oh, I don't really want to put Aubrey Widonga's leading lash salon on there <laughs> because I felt like maybe lash salon owners or beauty salon owners from Melbourne or Sydney wouldn't take me seriously because I am from a rural area and, you know, it's, they might have the mindset that it's easy to make a business work in a rural area. But I think that that's just a personal belief for me. It's it's uh, yeah. like I tend to think too much about what other people may be thinking. Yeah, we've had <laughs> we've had myriad versions of an answer to that question. Yeah. Mostly people fall on the side that it hasn't yeah. been limiting for them, but No. Well, not ev- not everyone's all. glowingly positive about it, but I do remember we when we first I guess realized that that was a good angle particularly to finish up with was speaking to a, a guy that runs a website called Tech AU, yep. which is one of the premier Australian tech websites, and yep. he does it part-time from Wodonga. Yeah, amazing. And he just said he'd never felt in the slightest bit held back. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't feel like I'm held back at all. Like but We, we all I've feel done, that, that yeah. maybe the fact that someone comes from a bigger, more beautiful or more cultural place somehow gives them some inherent extra yes. bit of talent or extra bit of value yes. or yeah yes. and it's hard to shake that which is why we asked the question like yeah <laughs> yeah well i think that you know business is business you you no matter where you are like it comes down to fixing a problem for someone and you make a profit or die <laughs> yeah 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 you're either sink or swim and you know failure is not an option what was that that was, what I was yeah. saying earlier but you <laughs> yeah. know it's pretty much the same anywhere whether you've got a big beauty salon in Albury or you've got a big beauty salon in Sydney, you still go through the same struggles. And at the end of the day, you stand out or you don't. You're, you're making a profit or you're not. And I think that it, it doesn't matter what I just said about me believing that it may have an effect on my business coaching. I That's just in my head. It's not. But honestly, living here, I like it here. I would prefer to stay here. You know, my family's here. My kids are happy. It's a great place to live. I don't believe I really need to be anywhere else physically. (laughs) I will say this one thing about you that I've always think that you've looked at things as a possibility and bigger than Aubrey Wodonga. Yeah. You've, You've never been sort of caught in what I would say like the click and this is where this is my lane. You've thought big. Yes. So I don't think – I think it's that mentality that has got you as far as you have because you the same with the Tech AU guy. There's no reason why you can't be as big as the next place in That's Melbourne it. or anything. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you refuse to bite into this insular political sort of stuff that goes yeah. on. And no, Mel yeah. did mention that and we're going on a, a tangent to finish up today, but you were described to me as someone that – Obviously, it probably comes from having bigger goals than just what's happening just in this little area, but that you haven't 100% bought into the local business culture the way some people have. Yeah. And you haven't maybe embraced the quote-unquote networking elements of local business the way some people have. Yeah, no. I, you know, my salon, we do what we do. We're great at it. 
I don't need to prove myself to anyone here. I have been to a few business networking events and I felt that um, it was very belittling because, you know, I'm, I'm a stupid beauty therapist. I've got a little salon that, you know, it's not that serious. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I don't feel like it's an effective use of my time. I could be working on my online store or, you know, creating systems and processes for my, for my business and or setting new team targets or whatever, you know, I don't need to go and do chit chat with local people about that. Um, I don't need to try and get new clients in the door. We're already booked out weeks in advance. Yeah. And in regards to, you know, my online businesses, you know, that's, that's Australia wide, Australia wide, I should say, or, and worldwide. Um, I don't need to try and get business out of meeting up with local people. Yeah. And it is very clicky. So I'm just not into that. I, I'm not a super social, but I don't really. Can I, I'll be, <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. When I first left a job many, many years ago to work for myself for a little period of time, it sort of been 2013. I certainly wasn't the type of personality that gelled well with the business chambers and the after hours because I was at the age where I could go to the youth events yes. still. Yep. And I saw how beneficial it was for certain people. Certain industries, the, the, yeah, yeah. for certain yeah. industries and certain personalities. Yeah. But you said the word clicky. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're getting that sort of feeling yeah. in business, you are looking at a distraction only. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. It, because yeah. it's not helpful and it's emotionally affecting you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, I, yeah, I just haven't really uh, tried a few times to, you know, and I've been asked, been sent emails. Um, yeah, that, that was what I was going to finish yeah. up with. How do people feel about your reluctance to be involved? Oh, they probably don't even notice. They probably don't notice that I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good answer. <laughs> I can't. I mean, I you're not obviously I'm, openly hostile about uh, it. But, no, yeah. no, but I, I don't think that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably not that, I'm not very memorable. I don't know. Like, I'm Oh, that's silly. <laughs> I feel like he's... We've been talking for an hour and a, but, 10 yeah, minutes, but, but, so you're like, pretty memorable. I think at these events, like, business is not spoken about. Like, the, what, the business discussions that I want to have are like what we've just spent the last hour talking about. I don't I don't want to talk about other people and what they're doing here. Like I don't care. Yeah. Um I <laughs> <That's> just <great. laughs> I just want to do what I want to do. Like, you know, look outside the box, you know, just solve problems. Yeah. And let the work speak for itself. That's it. You don't need to go and prove yourself to anyone. Um you don't and you don't need to win local awards either to prove yourself to anyone. Yeah. They don't it Awards, even though, yes, we've talked about awards today, but awards don't equal money in the bank. They don't equal new clients walking in the door. It's just an ego boost, really. Yeah. Like when you think about it, it's an ego boost. So you've got to look at how much time it takes you to, you know, do your submissions. And I will mention that I did enter the business awards here one year and I did miss out. <laughs> <laughs> You're not bitter about that. I was robbed. I was robbed. Okay. But it was a extraordinary amount of time that I dedicated to submitting those answers and being interviewed. I remember I took a couple of hours out of my day to be interviewed by a couple of the judges and then to be told at the end that they didn't even make the final decision. Somebody who I hadn't even met <laughs> made the final decision. Yeah. Um, and I was kind of like, hmm. As an entrepreneur, you would have said no to that if you yeah. hadn't known up front, I'm assuming. Yeah, I wouldn't have bothered. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah so, yeah, I I think people need to think about that. Um, you know, time is pr our time is precious as business owners and you need to always be asking yourself, is this the highest and best use of my time? Just before you go, I just want to know, can you list, please, all these amazing social handles that we need to get on and follow so we can watch watch you from afar? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, so I'm on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Instagram is Lauren Lappin underscore Runway Lash Co. Alua underscore Lash Beauty Bar. Um, and we also have our websites. I think I'm on LinkedIn as well. I was trying to break into that, but I don't know. You got not enough time to do <laughs> not it. Not enough time. And that's I'm on more Clubhouse. Of that, that's more of that dirty networking stuff, LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really loving that angle. But yeah, so I'm on LinkedIn. All my businesses are on there as well. Um, websites, pretty self explanatory allurelashes.com.au, runwaylashco.com. LaurenLappin.com.au. And yeah, I'm on Clubhouse now too. I've been speaking a lot on Clubhouse about the lash industry and business and yeah, some cool stuff. Yeah. Righto. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Well, she didn't disappoint, Mel. Good. Otherwise, I wouldn't be producer Mel, which let's just say I probably not really. <laughs> you would be sub producer Mel. Lived up to that hashtag. As of yet, but... You did what a lot of people in radio hope to do, move from producer to on-air, but you just didn't bother with the producing (laughs) part. (laughs) Yeah, that's pretty much it. I was like, how do I get myself on-air without actually having to do anything to do it? And you know what it was? It was fool you. I bloody fooled you. (laughs) You did. (laughs) You you fooled me by dropping 35 F-bombs and getting me to laugh a bit. (laughs) Yeah. Just a recap of when we first met and Josh interviewed me and he had to edit so many F-bombs out that quite potentially you had to weigh up. Could you handle that extra work on the back of a... Well, I broke it continu- into two parts. <laughs> ...continuous <laughs> format of a podcast host. Yeah. And I feel like I've, I've developed and evolved a little bit to help you out in that capacity. You've done what all five-year-olds manage to do. What, grow out of swearing. Grow out of swearing. <laughs> so I'm really growing, but is it growing? I always get in trouble about this, saying it, growing wrong. I would say grown, but... I always say growing. Uh, growing. Yeah. Interesting. Someone who definitely doesn't, well, she has done a lot of growing. <laughs> yeah, she's was done. Was Lauren. Oh. So what did you think? Tell me. Yeah, she was awesome. And I like her determination. Failure is not an option. Which I think, well, I did. I should have mentioned at the time, that's obviously not always correct. But in her world, when she said that, I believed it. Yeah. That for her, there was no other option but for that to work. And yep. I, I loved that. Yeah. I felt it in my bones when she said that. I was like, okay, well, she is 100% telling me the truth right now. It was probably one of those things where, you know, you read all those, you know, those great messages that people put on their Instagram pages and everything like that to lift you up and go, yeah, let's all get around this. Failure is not an option. But when she actually said it just then, it was, it was definitely, you're right, there was no, it, it wasn't an option. <laughs> it was, it didn't even come into her mind Yep. That oh we'll just give it a crack and see what happens. It was this is this is what's happening. Yeah. And I'm gonna make it happen. I think sometimes maybe people can take business too seriously. It's not always life and death. Mm-hmm. But for a small business owner, when your happiness, lifestyle, resources, family all can be impacted by something failing, it is the next closest thing sometimes for people than life and death. Yeah. It's do we get to live the life that we're dreaming of versus is this going to blow up in my face? Well, I actually think she is very realistic because I think a lot of people that I have known and witnessed potentially start a business but don't understand how much of work yep. is involved initially and like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm having my weekend off. No, it doesn't work like that. No. If you're starting a business, you are the business until it can <laughs> sustain itself which could be a year it could be two years it's not just a a short form sort of thing to get it up and put the infrastructure up and then bang you're done yeah yeah and i love how we somehow stumbled onto the idea that even for her she had to change a little bit of her mindset about moving from technician to business owner Mm -hmm. but for a lot of people i think they have a technical skill and they think oh i'm hating my job this week i'm going to go work for myself yeah. That becomes only one small part, the technical bit of everything that you're doing. Mm-hmm. 
there's the accounting, there's the marketing. Like I'm obviously only doing it part time for myself, but if I was just editing shows out of my house again, yeah, I'd be back to you know five or ten hours a week, as opposed to you know all the time that I'm not at my other job. I'm basically here trying to do something. Like I don't think she. That's some real perspective for people out there thinking. Should I go into business? Mm-hmm. Just for there's a lot to it. It's not just you get to just do your skill for yourself. You know what I liked afterwards was you and Lauren talking business and tech and yeah. websites we, and all this. We stuff jammed that, on that for a while. That I really just my eyes glaze over sometimes, but I was super excited I could to tell. Li- yeah. to listen to you two have like this in-depth conversation around it and it just reinforced to me how much people can connect on so many different levels yep. and it doesn't like you've got Lauren in charge of this massive big beauty business that is just expanding beyond out of control and then you've got you on the couch with your little tech head and yeah. I'm not calling you a little tech head, but just it's completely different worlds, yet there's still some form of commonality that you guys can connect on and yeah. it was cool. It was cool to watch. Yeah, and I guess for me particularly, I don't like to talk too much about the bits that people didn't get to hear, but I I guess got previously to work for a very large business mm-hmm. in a technical capacity, so a lot of the things that she was running by me were questions that I had to think about on an even larger scale in my previous job, but she has the actual power to execute yeah. on this stuff. And it was almost like me getting to riff off someone thinking, oh, well, if we talk about this, she can actually go do it. And if we talk about something like WordPress versus Squarespace to build a website, if we actually get to somewhere where she thinks, oh, there's an answer there, she can actually go hit yes on that. Do you know what so I, it was kind of exciting for me to get to kind of share a little bit of knowledge of things that I'd thought about with someone that's even more experienced in business than me. One of the other things that I thought was really cool, and it's a it's a trigger that comes about with me as well. I'm often triggered, but <coughs> triggered. I, yeah, is Lauren sitting there running a little beauty shop as a a dumb inverted commas beauty therapist. Mm. Yet she's just outscoring everyone in the business model because she's not actually dumb at all. No, she's very bright. She's, she's quite smart. And I I love that people's perceptions of things can be just blown out of the water. And why I say it's a trigger for me is because it annoys me when people see me dancing around in a flanny and then I get agitated when they don't think that I've got any brain cells <laughs> yeah. as well. So I, I like that we could share that side. Yep. To sort of just, you know, buck the trend a little bit. Buck the, the trend? Or? Buck the trend. <laughs> That's not what I thought you said. <laughs> buck the trend or break a stigma or, you know, all those sort of terms. Let's just throw it around there. And one thing that I do like about someone like Lauren is she knows business. And you know how well she knows business. And she bought us coffees. She bought us coffees. Yeah, I know. Which was, well, it should happen more, really. It should happen more. But... Um, if anyone else would like to buy us a coffee, you can do so. How can you do so, Josh? Well, you can one up Lauren. Yeah, two which upper. might be tough because she really went after those coffees for us. <laughs> you She's could go, bought them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could go to punchingsideways dot com and there's a button there to support us with a coffee, or you can share the show as well. And yeah, or just press play on there if you're not technical and you happen to be hearing this and you like to just go places and Even make it I super can easy. Do it. You can also find the show in YouTube now. It's just the audio with a picture, but if you like to put that on in the background, you can do that. Yeah. Get around us. Awesome. And get around Lauren. She's a wonderful person, and hopefully we can have her back on and really yep. drill into her business brain in the future. Yeah. Yeah.